Ron Foxcroft grew up in Aldershot, a suburb of Burlington, Ontario. Life was simple living with his mother, father, and two brothers. Mom was a piano teacher and also taught Sunday school at East Plains Church. His father was a lithographer and a huge sports fan. His two younger brothers thought Ron was a bit of a wacko and would later choose very safe and successful careers. After leaving school, Ron now started to show he had the right stuff to become an entrepreneur. He was prepared to work hard and do whatever it takes to be successful. I left school and started the landscape business and uh, cutting grass. And um, the guy that um, came to Canada to start Dairy Queen came and lived on my street. And I got to know him and uh, the guy across the road was the first franchisee for uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. And, and Colonel Har Harlan Sanders actually came to his house. I met uh, Colonel Harlan Sanders from Kentucky Fried Chicken. So I cut both their, their lawns, but the guy from Dairy Queen had an office. And I went down there one day and I said, well, I'm cutting your grass at home. Why don't I cut your grass at, at the office? And he said, that's a great idea. So I was always very self-conscious about that lack of education. And I think I tried to overcome it by just being seen to be the hardest working guy on the street. Ron's lack of formal education would be replaced by his determination to succeed and his ability to work harder than anyone else. He now had three jobs, his landscaping business, payroll timekeeping job, and had combined his love of basketball with making money. He became a referee. Except for the payroll job, Ron has steered clear of working for anyone. And now with two years of accounting education, he figured he was ready to tackle a bigger challenge. Buying a transportation trucking business, known as Fluke Transport. My buddy uh, was Ron Fluke. He introduced me to his dad, and um, his dad introduced me to his two brothers, and these two brothers, they, um, they wanted to retire. And Bobby, I wasn't sure that he really wanted to retire, but he wanted to do something different. He didn't want to have the responsibility of this company because they had three trucks working, nine trucks up against the fence, and things were tough in those days because interest rates at the bank were 18, 19, 20%. So um, I learned right then that when, when you uh, are trying to get a deal, you need to find that hot button. You need to find that deal button. And I remember uh, looking at Bobby and I said, Bobby, you don't really want to retire, do you? And he says, no, but I don't want the responsibility. And I said, okay, Bob, I don't have any money. Why don't you, uh, why don't I promise you a job for life? if you'll convince your two brothers to sell me the company over time. He said, a job for life. He said, uh, I've, got, um, I've got three interests. That really, really fits what, what I'm thinking. In less than three months, Foxcroft had all 12 trucks on the road, hauling freight, and he paid back the $100,000 loan. He also resurrected the company's famous tagline, if it's on time, it's a fluke. Ron Foxcroft is having great success with Fluke and Fox 40, but he's had his share of unsuccessful ventures. I bought a, a company and um, that, that stubbornness, I, I kept the company uh, for about four years, which was probably about two years too long. And it probably cost me about $2 million that stubbornness, that competitive edge. Uh, uh, basically, um, it was just um, one of those things where I should have been smarter and thrown in the towel, but I couldn't justify in my mind that throwing in the towel was the smart business thing. If I, when I wanted to throw in the towel with that company that, that I had purchased and was not going very well, my losses were about a half a million bucks. By hanging in another two years, my losses had accumulated to about two million dollars. Now I had to work harder to make up the two million dollars by the time I got out. 
After the break, we find out how the Fox 40 whistle almost ended up on the scrap heap. At 65 years young, Ron Foxcroft still has a lot of gas in the tank. He follows a rigid work schedule and credits a good deal of success to planning. You know, there's no such a thing as an eight-hour day, and um, business never leaves you. If you're a true entrepreneur, uh, a business never leaves you. Now, that's good and that's bad because uh, I, I can't leave it alone. And, um, you know, the amount of downtime I have is, is minimal. You know, I go to sleep at 11 o'clock. Sometimes I get up at 2, but I'm up at 5 in the morning for the day. The 1976 Olympics would stimulate Ron's idea for a peeless whistle. While refereeing the Olympic basketball finals, Foxcroft would observe an infraction by a Yugoslavian player. But the pee in his whistle jammed, and the infraction went without penalty. Ron was booed and hissed at for missing the call, but it was an equipment failure that was the cause. Four short years later, after starting Fluke, and with over $100,000 of his own money at stake, Foxcroft would start to work on his peeless whistle. Fox 40 International brought sons Steve and Dave into the business. They are chips off the old block and have gone against their father's wishes on more than one occasion. Steve wanted to sell purple whistles. And I said, Steve, purple whistles, that's the stupidest idea I've ever seen in my life because there's no one Pantone of purple. There's Minnesota Vikings purple. There's University of Western Ontario purple. There's no purple that's perfect. And of course, he went out and sold purple whistles and made gobs of money. Anyway, I found out I felt rather stupid and uh, I swallowed my pride and uh, as only a, a father and son can do and I called him in and I said, Steve, I'm really glad you went against me. I said, only a son would have the onions to do that in a business. And Dave, uh, Dave said to me, we're going to um, start to trade in Europe in Euro dollars. And I said, Dave! There is no way it's worth more now than the American dollar. And Dave had gone out and made the price sheets in euros, sold in euros, didn't tell me. And um, had he had told me, I would have I strangled him. But then he came back. And once again, I had to sit back in my chair and eat a little humble pie kind of looked to the left and looked to the right. And I said, Dave, you went against me. I'm proud of you. Thank you. The Fox 40 and Fluke Transport stories are inspirational. But every great success story has its highs and lows. And sometimes the lows seem almost impossible to pull out of. Ron remembers a time when the Fox 40 whistle and his dream almost ended up on the scrap pile. I was trying to get the final product to come off the mold and it wouldn't. And for a day, I quit. I actually quit. I, I left the office on that Friday night and said, I owe $150,000. Nobody believes in me. I'm a failure. I felt lonely, even though I had family around me. Um, even though th there, were, there could be 100 people around me, I felt I was alone. I had never felt so lonely. You know, being an entrepreneur, even though you have people surrounding you all the time, can be lonely because when things go, don't go well, you look yourself in the mirror and you second guess yourself. And, and you get troubled inside because the first thing you think of is that you're a failure. And I thought that weekend, that whole Saturday, uh, that I was a failure and that nobody believed in me and they were all right and I was wrong. I was a failure. It was a dumb idea. It would never work. It would never sell. And then on the Sunday, my competitive juices took over and I said to myself, no, they're all wrong. 
and I'm right, and I'm not a quitter. Ron Foxcroft, born November 5th, 1945, persevered early education through his love for sports. He worked harder than anyone else and maintained a positive, focused approach when faced with adversity. Ron Foxcroft has performed at the top of his game, both on the basketball court and off. He is truly an exceptional husband, father, and grandfather, sportsman, and entrepreneurial inspiration. And that's how Ron Foxcroft got started. This better be a damn good production.